Hello everyone, my name is Araceli Garcia and here is a little run through of this presentation I did for the ERWC uh, conference. I have been a high school English teacher for almost 25 years. I recently left the classroom and served as the district ELA TOSA where I get an opportunity to share some of the strategies and just uh, teaching methods that I have gained throughout the years uh, that hopefully can be of some benefit to you. So let me just jump right in. So uh, here's the components of this uh, workshop. Uh, number one, I'm going to talk about quite a bit about English learners and how we can support them. We'll talk about the modes of communication that we see in the ELD standards, and then we'll just take a deep dive into the ERWC curriculum and some of the lessons I have done. And we'll end with talking about some research-based strategies and great online so, uh, resources that teachers now have available to them. So, you know, I always like to begin here with just reminding us that, you know, we as in, in California have many students that are English learners and they are bringing an asset to our schools. Uh, they bring in, uh, again, uh, great insight into the world. Uh, they bring great uh, experiences that they can share with their peers. And so we want to make sure that our students, are, you know, I always tell teachers, we're not trying to make them uh, monolingual, we want them to be multilingual. And so we want to respect their language, their home uh, values. And so how can we support the learning of the second language that they have? And so here's uh, my high school. So I am at Workman High School. It's actually my alma mater. So I'm very proud to be a teacher there. Uh, it is situated in the city of industry slash La Puente slash Belinda. It's a working class community. Uh, and uh, this is a little of the breakdown. 90%, uh, almost 90% of our students are Latinx students. Uh, we have, you know, few uh, students of Asian uh, background, Filipino, right, are Black students. But as you can see here, we have quite a high percentage of students who fall under the socially economically disadvantaged. We also have a high percentage, almost 13% of our students have special needs. So, you know, again, when you work in these kind of populations, in all populations, our students have many needs, not just our English learners. And so teachers have to have this grab bag of tools that will help them deliver the instruction. All right, so I always like to begin with the what. What is it that I'm teaching? And I always think of the end in mind. What do I want them to get to? So, you know, I knew that for this unit, I wanted to get to an argumentative type of writing. And I'm gonna look at my district pacing calendar, then my uh, standards. So because I work with a lot of English learners, I also need to know what are their different levels. So as you can see here, here's just a little breakdown. You can read this on your own, but I need to know, you know, do I have newcomers, students who are level one? And do I have students who are, are still at the, you know, very basic emerging level? They're going to struggle with some of the readings uh, that I'm gonna give them. So I need to find out how can I deliver this information? Uh, my expanding students, that's usually the ones that we have in our English courses since our emerging and beginning will probably be in an ELD course. So we'll probably have a lot of expanding and bridging students. Now, don't let them fool you, right? Because some of our kids who are English learners are very adept at speaking common English, right? So they, they can have good conversations and you're hearing them and you're saying, no, this kid can speak English, they're fine. It's the academic English language that they struggle with. It's the writing of coherent uh, you know, sentences. And so the grammatical part is also something that they struggle with. So yes, on the outside, they might seem like they don't need a lot of support, but we definitely need to have a, a large range of data to help us uh, figure what they need. So I'm gonna just take a moment to talk about this great online tool that I recently have been using with my ELD students. I have an ELD summer class and I have a lot of newcomers and uh, just at a different, uh, again, levels. So this is a free program. It's right out of your uh, Microsoft uh, Outlook. You know, you'll find it where you have your uh, emails. And if you look for Microsoft Teams, there is a program called Reading Progress. So just taking an overview here, I can give my students a passage, either one that I choose on my own or one that's already in the program. They would record and the computer will pick up how well they are reading. So it lets the student know and me know, are they uh, how are they pronouncing things? Are they uh, not 
reading carefully, right, uh, and with some fluidity. So it gives me so much data here that now I can use to put them in groups or to give them more support. And so again, uh, I have links to all of these online programs I'm gonna talk about. So you'll see where you can get a little tutorial for this one too. So this gives me again more data. All right, so now let's look into the ELD standards. There are three modes of communication for our ELD standards. We have collaborative, interpretive, and productive. So I always like to think of collaborative, of course, they're having dialogue with the teacher, with themselves, and small groups, larger groups. Interpretive is definitely going to be their understanding of a text, whether it's media or it's uh, something in a written form, right? So this is a reading comprehension, their understanding. Finally, productive. What are they doing with uh, what they're learning? Most of the time, this could be an oral presentation or some type of written text, and so they're producing something. All right, so here is, of course, a glance at the ELD standards. So if you were to look in your ELD standards, this is one of the front pages that you'll see. And so you'll see here, just let me break it down, the different levels. Here you have your emerging, here you have your expanding, and here you have your bridging. And even those are broken into, you know, from early to exit stages. And it tells you some basic things that you can do, right? So if I wanted to do something with interpretive, let's say at the expanding level, all right, Maybe I want them to read independently. That's something that's about grade appropriate, whether it's some simple text. Uh, if I'm working with my bridging students, maybe I want them to write, right, and express ideas with a little bit more complex uh, academic demands, right? So again, I can take one of these uh, standards here and use that as my learning target for the day. Uh, maybe I do a few of these coupled with my Common Core standard. All right, now let's dive into the ERWC modules. So there's so many things to choose from there. So if you go on to your ERWC uh, website, you'll see all types of grade levels that you can look at. So I was teaching an 11th grade class and one of our core uh, pieces is the crucible. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna use the crucible and uh, here's all the different things that I can use with it, right? that students can have access to, that you have access to. And the beautiful thing is, this is a living document, meaning that teachers are constantly uploading new uh, assignments and new activities, so it's always pretty fresh. So I know I'm gonna start with the Crucible, but I also wanna make it very relevant to my students' lives so I could keep them engaged, right? This is very, really, you know, old piece of literature. So how do I make it fresh and new? So I knew I wanted to do something with juvenile justice. So I definitely believe in social, justice as a topic that will engage our students. Uh, so I went through and I found the juvenile justice module. It is in the 12th grade. But remember my uh, juniors, the 11th grade and 12th grade, they share the same uh, standards. So what I loved about this one is if you take a peek, you'll see that it includes a integrated ELD lesson. So here is my juvenile justice. This is a student version, right? And here also is a designated lesson plan for the students. I have the right different versions here. So this is going to be a great help. And again, as you can see here, teachers are constantly posting new documents. All right, so now we jump into the actual lesson plan. And what you'll see here is not all uh, ERWC modules have the ELD components. So you almost have to dig a little bit, but uh, you will find that these will show you how they do the integrated ELD, right? So this is where you're teaching in your regular English class, or maybe you're teaching social science, and these are the learning targets, if you will. And in this double line box, you will find what the designated teacher will do. Now, I know every school is slightly different on how you uh, address this, but just a reminder, that there's a difference between integrated and designated. So integrated is going to be within the regular classes. So these are students who are mainly, again, sitting in their PE class, math class, right? They're all taking these courses, but they need to have ELD support. So this is something, you know, especially at the high school level, a lot of teachers are not quite familiar with, with this wording or, or this type of lesson, right? Where you have to give them a little bit extra support. Uh, so the content of the lesson with language support, what does that look like? So as I go through these strategies, I'll show you what that looks like. And again, you're paying attention to 
your common core standards along with the ELD standards, just like the ones I just showed you. So um, now if you're doing designated, there's different ways to do that. Uh, some students are placed into an entire course. So they are sitting in an ELD course. This is especially for our emerging. And this is where, again, teachers are using specific protected time. Again, I need to be very clear with this. This is not study hall. An ELD course is not a time where a teacher from another course is saying, hey, can you just go over this? Um, hey, they need to do some homework. No, this is protected time for students to work on their language skills, their language development. So as you can see here, they're working on, you know, how to put together sentences. They're looking at maybe the idioms that were used in social science classes, let's say, right? They're looking very carefully at the ELD standards. So this is protected time. Now, if a student, students are not in a designated ELD class, how are they getting this? Right? All English learners by state law need to be getting designated ELD also during their day. So this might happen maybe in the English class. Uh, maybe the school has uh, some other place where they're getting some ELD instruction. So, you know, again, this is a bit of a challenge at the high school, maybe even middle school level. All right. Well, when you have this curriculum as you can see here this is what an integrated lesson plan would look like so here is for example i wanted to show a murder trial right of a 12 year old i don't know if i remember this case very uh, very vividly a little boy was wrestling with a little friend and uh the girl dies right so we watch this video so here's the video there's some vocabulary so this is all of my students are doing this the video is going to help my English learners to see the visuals. I'm going to target specific words, right? So again, this is helping all of my students, especially my English learners. So it's integrated. I'm giving them language support. Now, if I had a parallel class, right? Now my, the ELD parallel teacher can say, okay, I want to parallel what the English teacher is doing. Again, depending on how your school does this, you might work uh, collaboratively with your uh, ELD teacher. They would have the same lesson. So notice again the double lines. So you'll know on your ERWC lesson templates if it's a designated ELD because of those double lines. So they have here, okay, they tell you, okay, the students just watched this video. And now we're going to dive deeper into some, uh, some language skills. So here they're talking about active verbs and passive verbs. And we're talking about how it definitely in legal. Uh, documents, right? You use a lot of the passive verb, uh, so you are not uh, indicating the subject, right? You're not indicating who is the performing the action, so you explain that. But you also want to show them that this is not the way we usually write in regular, let's say, uh, an, an essay. So they need to understand the difference between active and passive. Now, I would love this even for my uh, non-EL students. I think this is a great lesson for all students to benefit from because I might see this as an issue that many of my students are having as they're writing. All right, so I've taken a look at, at the what, now I'm gonna tell you us how. How do I deliver this in an engaging manner so I don't lose my students, especially I don't lose my English learners? So I created this little template, this little uh, visual here to help me out, and I call it the SIP method, right? So collaborative, interpretive, and productive. So I wanna make sure that throughout my lessons, I am hitting each of these, right? I know there's days where I can't do all of them, but I definitely want them, I want my students to have time to collaborate with each other. So here are the questions I ask. I also want to make sure that they're understanding what they're reading. So these are the things I do to get them through the reading. And then I want them to produce something so I know that it's a little uh, informal assessment. Do I, did they understand it? So again, here's the, the SIP method that I call it, right? We're gonna take a SIP, of the ELD uh, uh, right standards, collaborative, interpretive, productive. And so all of these ideas here, I created a little choice board. So this is all, again, I will, you will have this accessible to you in the Google Slides that I will be attaching. And so all of these are hyperlinks. And I love just, you know, I, honestly, I love lesson planning. I, I really do. I'm, I'm kind of a big nerd when it comes to that. And I always ask, you know, what can my students do um, that'll get them really going? And so uh, you'll see here, for example, here's a Socratic seminar. I love using Padlet. It's a great way to share 
us, you know, what students are doing. Pear Deck, oh my goodness, I, I don't know what I would do without Pear Deck. Uh, students can write and the, you as a teacher can see on the computer live how the students are doing. So let's say you're giving them a writing piece. You can see who's doing it, who's not. You can see if they're making any grammar issues. You can walk over to them and say, hey, you, you forgot to put a comma here. Hey, you know, this is, uh, you needed to write complete sentences. So again, all of these are hyperlinks that you can use uh, to show you how can I deliver my instruction. All right, let's take a deep dive into the ERWC unit that I did. So I did, I use the Crucible along with Juvenile Justice. And so as my students are reading, I'm also giving them options uh, to get through the readings. And one of the things I, my students love to do, and I love to see them do this, is to act out a scene from the play. And so we're reading it, they're reading it in small groups. Everybody has a part. If my students are not very proficient in English, maybe there's going to be the listener and they're gonna take notes, they're gonna summarize at the end. Everyone participates. Some students wanted to do a puppet show, some students because we had just gone back from, you know, our distance learning or hesitant to do group work. They wanted to do uh, maybe, you know, create a, a children's book on Google Slides or do some kind of research. Uh, Powtoons is another like uh, interactive type of uh, animated uh, video that they can make. All kinds of things. So giving students choices is, is very powerful. All right. So here again is more of the details of the project. So they had to do a creative project. Uh, they could do research, right? So of course, I just broke it down for them. All right, so here are a picture of my students uh, just having a blast, right? So again, this is a mainstream English 3 course. Uh, they're outside, they're uh, recording, they're even coming in at lunchtime. Uh, they are editing all the different skills that kids need uh, to be successful. Uh, and so, uh, you know, here's the common core standards that we're hitting. All right, some students, like I said, they wanted to do uh, a puppet show. So here they are, you know, my artistic students are drawing things out, really thinking about what the scene was like and the details of the scene. Uh, I always have a bag of costumes and props. So I have you know, my boys here putting on the wigs to play Abigail, right, and so forth. Again, just they just love this. Once they do those scenes, we're not done yet. Then the next thing is, okay, now I want them to write. So I'm going to give them, again, some choices. And so they're going to be writing, uh, uh, doing some research, and then we're going to go on a Socratic seminar and then end with some uh, writing. So these are the three choices that they have. They can look at juvenile justice. They, uh, my own students actually were the ones who brought up the idea of sexism and how it's so prominent in the play and misogyny. And then finally, we talked about incarceration and the death penalty, uh, especially if, if it is fair for all people. So this is very, again, organic. Sometimes students come up with topics, and which is really what you want them to do. So once again, here is what I had them do. We actually started with the four-corner debate. We took each of these, broke it down, and did a four-corner debate and really got the students thinking about these things. And then I used uh, something called Jamboard. And Jamboard, again, is another free tool that you can use as part of the, your Google uh, suite. So if you go to where you can choose your Google Docs, in your Google Classroom, if you scroll down, you'll find uh, Jamboard. And let me just open that one up. And the fun thing with this one is that you can create this little template and then students can take their uh, sticky note and they can move it around. So you'll see here, again, I give them some time. I give them a question. So let's say, for example, is Abigail a victim or not? So strongly agree, strongly disagree. And then the students take a little sticky note, they go on the side here, and they have to decide, strongly agree, strongly disagree, I'm in the middle, and they have to notice the instructions I told them they had to write out a good little sentence. And, and so again, practicing their language, they're producing, they're collaborating, maybe they're talking to a partner before they share out, right? Uh, so, so all of this is, again, great tools. Here's another question I posed. And uh, here's another one, right? So again, they get to move. And this one was interesting because uh, they really didn't think that she was a victim. They thought she was a villain. Uh, but as we continued to progress through the, the play, they started to see that, yes, maybe she was uh, a victim too in the way she's portrayed in the play was not quite fair. All right, so then we had the Socratic seminar. 
we had also read a couple other articles, including one that said, did Kayla have to die about a, a young boy who actually shot his little classmate and the use of guns um, and gun violence. And, you know, again, do children know what they're doing? So we did brain research. Again, it was a very extensive unit. And here my students are talking about, you know, and debating uh, about, you know, does a child know what they're doing at that young age? Um, and I want to support my students with language, and so I give them these uh, talking frames. Especially again, my English learners can benefit from this. My shy students can benefit from this. My uh, special uh, students with special needs. So this is just a good teaching strategy. So I show them how we do this. How do you disagree with someone? Uh, how do we use more academic language? So this is a great tool too. And so you'll see here again. I have a pretty large class, and they're all participating. The inner group here is, is in the Socratic seminar. The groups in the back are evaluating and adding more comments. So everyone's engaged at all times. Again, I give them, you know, brief instructions and then they go at it again. Um, all right. And so here's some videos. Uh, I also had my students do a smaller group uh, discussion and they recorded this on Zoom. Uh, and again, you know, they had to find a passage and break it down. Again, this is great. Just more support from the students. Again, you can watch this on your own. And again, I, I just added more little videos to show you, you know, how they're uh, evaluating the whole process of the Socratic seminar and how much they enjoyed it. Uh, again, you know, we looked at national statistics on domestic violence. And these are the things that my students brought up. So then I included this uh, as part of the discussions. And so this is, again, you know, they're, they're discovering all this on their own. All right, and so that's kind of where we're at. Okay, we're not quite done yet. So then again, after they're done with the Socratic seminar, then we get into the writing. And so this for this last part is they're going to be writing a blog, a website that they're going to create, and they're going to create this website on a program. Uh, first, we're going to use Pear Deck to check the writing, and then they're going to publish it on something called Adobe Spark, which I think is now called Adobe Creative Cloud. All of these, again, free, a lot of quick little tutorials on how to use this. Okay, so again, here are the instructions that I gave them, how to brainstorm, right? They're going to work in small groups to really think their ideas out, and then they're gonna write. And so this is what Pear Deck looks like. We're on the teacher side. And so there's a code that the students would use to get into this website. I give them the, the little Google slides that I created and they're all interactive slides. So then students could type in their answers. And the beautiful thing, like I said, is you get to see every student's writing live. So you don't have to wait until they're done. So as the students are working, I might have my computer on at the front and I'm checking to see and I can go around and I could already see, okay, so and so, you know, you need to write a little bit more. Oh, you didn't answer this part. And so it lets me just give that that very uh, individualized uh, instruction and, and support. So again, great tool that I, I love to use. Finally, once they're done, they use uh, again. This is uh, uh, they post it on something called Padlet, right? So Padlet becomes my big um, let's say wall. I use this came in very handy when I was doing uh, distance learning, right? And I wanted students to share their work. But these individual ones, this is where you have your Adobe Spark. So the students upload their link, and here they have their writing, and it's very professional looking. So this is what Adobe Spark looks like. They have great slides, images to choose from. This is what my students are writing. Again, they come up with their title. They're putting in their research. So it moves away from the traditional, you know, uh, two-page essay on a Google Doc. It just, again, the kids get a click out of it because it seems so professional, uh, like they're making their own web pages. All right, so thank you so much. Here's some of my contact information. I will have the link for you for all of this if you wanted more information. Uh, again, I do have an Instagram here if you wanted to just see a little bit more of some of the workshops that I do or some of the more strategies that I teach. I'm always willing to share so many of the things that I've been uh, doing that have just made teaching one of my uh, favorite things to do. I love it every day. And like I said, I've been doing this for 25 years and I could probably go for another 25. 
Uh, so thank you so much. If you have any questions, please uh, reach out.